Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, my name is Trollmaker. This is the 2012 War Game Cup, brought to you by UGen Systems and Intel. And we are witnessing a very, very rare thing. A packed versus packed match. First, representing the color blue, the packed member Antitorak. And, representing the red color of packed, we have... A Medina. A Medina. A Medina. Alright. And I say rare because Pact is uh, not a very favored country. Not, not a very favored faction right now in the game. NATO is very, very dominant with a lot of high caliber players. And so to see any kind of Pact versus Pact matchup is. It's rare. It is especially. Brought forth by the fact that um, the latest DLC was in fact a NATO DLC, so newer players to the game should also be more oriented towards NATO as opposed to the pack. But hey, we got two pack players, so show some pretty different strategies here. To start off, we have a single scout here. No, just probably gonna take a position in one of these towns. No real command armor here though, and over here we have a lot of infantry. Lots of infantry. We see have the TO 55s, dual TO 55 flame puzz. Actually, it's just a flamethrower vehicle. And we have some support vehicles, a lot of infantry though. Over here, we have a, a single T 80, quite expensive. I think it's about 80, 90 points. Some T 55s, very cheap. Some Tungusco, and more infantry. So, uh, I'd say a relatively balanced group of units are from uh, anti Torak, but obviously very, very infantry heavy. And so what will a Medina have to deal battle with this? Well, these T-64s, uh, not so great against a mass amount of infantry. Uh, some anti-aircraft vehicles, more anti-aircraft. This BTR-60PAI is a more anti-tank than is anti-infantry. Uh, lots of anti-aircraft. And this one here, the SPW, is anti-infantry, anti but not too much to deal with the infantry. So if it gets bloody, it, it appears that uh, a Medina is going to have to rely on micro in order to beat these infantries. Of course, the Scott Eagles do not have weapons on them, so, I mean, they're relatively easy to micro against. And here we go. It looks like he's actually gonna use these as a support squad, maybe taking India. And in the middle here, we have some action right away. A Scott moves right into the forest in the front as Amadina's trying to get position. And, ooh, here we go, unloading. And, oh, this just got picked off, a 50 point loss. The T-64 has shown up to try and do some support. Uh, might not be the best unit for this. The remainder of the army is not supporting this poor T-64 stuck by itself. This place has been taken by Amadina, but it's not the most secure place at any point. It can just be taken out, and it looks like he is in fact got Commander here as well to block that. And Blue is moving to take India. It's not smart, it's not unusual, but it, it is something. There is no command armor here for Antioch, and we do see the 264 has taken a considerable high amount of damage, and it looks like the T-80 is hitting it. That's kind of scary. We have an Afghanski support vehicle winding up as well. It has moved into the position. Those guys are trying to find another position for themselves, separate from this. No, an air attack. Of course, there are no air vehicles on this map. On this, uh, on this. What is this? This is a match. On this match, it's a match. So it's a chase down. The C64s are trying to escape. This position has been lost. He had did in fact hold the UAZ in time, which is quite good. And the T64s are trying to move to this central location where in fact we have a, a bulk of horses. But oh my god, the UAZ just might get sniped. There are some Scots. Scots, of course, have no guns, so never mind. Uh, these vehicles might be able to snipe though, if they can unload in time. The Afghan six are still healing into this E64. The Afghan C64 is just a sport vehicle, much, much, much better against infantry than this. And it's definitely soaking all the damage as the T55s and T80 are winding up the deal with this T64. This is really the only down tank that Abedina has. And the UAZ, oh my god, I don't know if it can get away or not. This is getting scary. In the woods, we have some battles going on. Now you're gonna take a chance this. Moto Strelke. I've been told the proper pronunciation of this is Moto Strelke. Alright, the Moto Shoki have found themselves a 
fighting some anti-infantry vehicles. Also some very interesting choices of rifle squads. Let's try this one now. By Sadukari. By Sakari. Sound very... Oh, that's right, because they're all packed. Burp, burp, burp. Uh, Paller faggots. Different type. Very, very expensive type of thing. Tank I used a PTR faggots myself. Yes, I did say faggot on YouTube. I'm allowed. That's what it says right there. Faggot. Oh, we have a little bit of a flank move here. Oh my god, I didn't even see this one. Oh, no, is the power of it actually ran into these? And it looks like it actually will be able to deal with it. An attempt at sniping this UAZ. The, the power of it was able to get this vehicle, and now it's just the anti aircraft dealing with the spaddle. Not even going to try. Not even going to try. Red looks like he has successfully taken the middle, but oh, it just doesn't look so good. If Scott hasn't surrounded, it is, of course, not vehicle that does any damage and never mind the TO-55s are coming in with support vehicles of course the TO-55 is most effective at fire position so they can demoralize and stun troops they are a very very cost effective way of getting a stun off and we have just a great little formation attack moving in here I believe this is just the Spedo Cronierzi all right I tried and blue has in fact completely taken the middle. There is a UAZ here, and it looks like a big, big, big lead for Anti Torok, who is just teaching Emadina how to play the game. We do have Malka artillery getting fired upon embarrassingly by a single vehicle, and there are still some pallet faggots, but there are some Scots moving in to deal with it, and some BMPs. It's probably these uh, specialized V lettered units and the middle is mostly cleaned up he's trying to keep the UAZ in here just to kind of deny any kind of point grab for India and in fact the Paladar faggots will in fact get cleaned up by these brand new Spadio Corneozzi that just does not roll off the tongue not at all now here's an awkward little situation Blue doesn't really know what's here but he knows that the commands there He's in fact moving this Spado Crinierzi into the town here, and this might be effective at cutting off the retreat of this command as a lot of Urals leading the charge. That's a little weird. A T-55, some V Sadkara, Vi Sadkara. I don't know if this is actually a common one. I don't think it is. But if it does become a common one, this will become very problematic for my casts. Here will be another unit that is completely unpronounceable with the English tongue. All the while, it looks like there are still two bases here for Abedina. Doesn't have much of a chance of catching up. He is unloading quite a few infantry, and this is a, a very key thing that people do when they're very, 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 very far behind. Instead of banking up and trying to go for an all-in, they will just buy a bunch of infantry and try to survive. I can't really tell you what strategy I favor more. Surviving and hoping the enemy makes a mistake, or going for a big all-in and trying to win it. It's hard to say, but the BTRs will in fact find the Spado Kronerskis, and these are in fact attacking vehicles. These Spado Kronerskis might have met their maker from the Motostrel Kalis who have invaded their homes. There are some Urals moving along the map, I don't know what they're doing. Maybe trying to supply somebody, I guess. But this is a pretty crazy battle. Look how great this little battle looks. And oh, and the Moto Strelkis have run straight into the battle. And this is the craziest fight of all. I have never actually got to see a scene like this where it's like a completely urban war. And oh my god, look at this. This is fantastic. I have not in the history of this game got to see a battle as cool looking as this. Where it's actually people firing at each other. And cool ass vehicles moving on the curve. But I got distracted because there's a T-62 attacking into a T-055. This course is a good trade for the 262, but if he gets the unlucky stun, he is in trouble. And he is, in fact, backing out. He is dead. The TO-55 was, in fact, successful. Oh, there's a by side car right here. And there's a lot of units in this little town. The TO-55 winding up, deciding, yes, smarter to retreat as um, this position j does belong to red. But keep in mind, it's not much of a position to keep. There's no real reinforcement path here. This is the reinforcement path of red. And red coming in with the BTR-60 PAI. And, ooh, it gets shot down. Critical failure. Explosion. There's not really much of a play that is available to anti Torok right now. He's moving a power faggot out into the open. T-55 is winding up to attack. We also have, you know, it's just the T-55 PMBs. 
some rockets coming off by the Pallers. They get a nice bit of damage to kill off one of these tanks. Moto Strikalis are trying to move in, but these Vi said Kyrie's arguments. Oh my god, here comes a crazy flank. Ambedina is showing a little bit of strategical knowledge as he's moving in all over the place. Now, splitting up your units like this against both targets is not particularly smart, especially considering against these support vehicles, but he's able, with both numbers, just kind of survive. Everything here has been forced back. The Moto Strikalis, however, is picking off a lot of support vehicles. This will no doubt die as well. And a nice, very successful, very well coordinated push by Amadina. You gotta give a person credit when they deserve it. Has a very, very poor opener, but has done a very successful job in doing a multi pong attack. The Afghanistan's got to come back to support Afghanistan, of course, are an anti aircraft unit. Another support vehicle. Oops. They're a support vehicle. Of course, of course, they're good against infantry. Of course, they would come back for this purpose. This is what they're there for. We have the T-55 running straight into the BTRs, successfully runs away the Moto Strelkis, Strelkis, Moto Strelkis, I said it, I said it right, first time, Moto Strelkis, pushing it back, some Vaisad Kharis are moving in though to try and intercept these Moto Strelkis, and they do in effect do so, this is quite a little battle, the Moto Strelkis will no doubt go down, 3-4, three, 3-2-1, three, and Dedzer is just, just the one guy running in the woods by himself. He's not running, he's walking, looks like with a knife. And oh, here comes out the gun as he dies. Very exciting action here in the middle as more and more infantry are being pushed forward by anti Torak. Now we have something going on on this map. Where was something going on? Oh, oh my god, he's moving the BMP right into the maw of the mouth of the enemy. It will no doubt drop some crazy amount of units here. Come on, drop them. Drop your pants. Nope, he's going to continue fighting forward. He, he ended the life of one. This one only has two two men left in it. So it's a very, very easy target. And this one's down as well. And here's another one with just three men trying to hide away. But there's no way to escape the wrath of Antu Torak. And he's just gunning down men. Well, he's not gunning down any units. Oh, oh, this crazy amount of units firing in this direction. If you were in this legion, you would definitely be pooping your pants right now. And by pooping your pants, I would mean hopefully running, because that was a retarded battle. BMP's winding up, trying to take these T-64 BMs, which, actually it's just the one. The T-64 BM, of course, does have a chance here, because it's only the single BM, I, 1P, and boom, it's dead. Just like I said. T-64 BM's trying to move into another position, trying to snipe it whatever it can. And it's got to keep a good distance, because these Z... VPZUs have a very, very good RPG with a very, very long range, apparently. Possibly the longest in the game. And will it get away? No, in fact, it gets crushed down by a lot of rockets. We have a little crazy move here. Oh my god, look at all these infantry is moving out of nowhere. And we do, in fact, have a flak dead. There's nothing here protecting this UAZ. There is an anti aircraft vehicle all the way over here, but there's nothing really protected. And here he comes in, dead, gone, dead as a fish. There's only one more point left for Medina, and it's over here, and at this point, if anti Torah really wanted to just snipe this game, win this game, he would just move all his units this way, because with a point difference like this, there's not much available for poor little Medina, as he rallies two tank destroyers right to the middle of the forest, I'm sorry, that doesn't seem like a good move, oh, by the way, there's a single helicopter on the map, this means that Amadina did bank up for this, and it's actually doing pretty well. You know, there's not a lot of anti-aircraft units available, and that's mostly because, um, for, the, for the most part of the game, there hasn't been a lot of aircraft out, and so this is a really, really good late-game shift that you can do. Uh, you play your standard game, and, you know, very, very last minute. But keep in mind, you're supposed to do this when you have a lot of money. You just shift right into helicopters and snipe at a lot of units. But when you're doing this, you should probably be doing this with higher numbers. Uh, you're looking at like 8 to 10 helicopters, so pretty insanely high numbers. And it's a, it's a big late game shift. You do it all at once when you don't expect it. You just won't have enough available. He's trying to reclaim this position, but unfortunately this position is not particularly strategically valuable anymore now that the com com armor command is gone. He's moving lots of, of Moto Strelkis and lots of BTR-60 PAIs into position. Drives off the Scott, which of course didn't have weapons in the first place. He's got to deal really with these Spado Kronerzies. Kronerzies. But yeah, he's going to get this BTR 60 PLI, it looks like, which will pat it, pat it down a little bit for the Moto Strelkis. Moto Strelkis. Moto Strelkis. Which are also going down. They only have eight men left. 
So that's a little bit of a problem for him. Of course, here comes a tank destroyer as well. Yeah. Ah, you, you know, I, I, I'm wondering if he's just trying to lose on purpose. Because here we go, so rocket instantly kills. It, it's just... It's just a lot of bad choices here for Amadina, and this is a very, very one-sided match. And Antitorak is just really making it known that he's going to go on to the next round. I never really checked out what the mode was for this particular map. Um, oh, by the way, in case you're wondering, Antitorak has in fact gone with like what I would do. We went for Charlie, Kilo, India. That's what I would do. Alternatively, Juliet, Kilo, India. Just it gives it gives you a nice control of roads and whatnot. I like it. That's how I play this map. Other people play it very very differently. But uh, yeah, a little bit of a lull in action, mostly because Anti Torak has killed most of the units on the map. Now he's moving, in fact, a group of ten men, ten the best. VPZU. Very. I'm very curious as to what um, nationality actually has this unit. It looks like it might be French by the berets, but the uh, the green berets also wear berets. And they're Americans, but it could be French. Maybe it's Belgian. Could also be German. Really, it's probably French. A bunch of Frenchies with their little fanny packs on. That's right. You run, boys. You run into these woods with your fanny packs on. You probably don't even need field rations. You probably can't even survive without your mocha lattes from Starbucks. Does Starbucks have mocha lattes? I don't know. I only drink coffee. That's cheap. But yeah, they're moving in. They want to really snipe this command. He hasn't really um, invested a lot in this. It's just a few units. And these kind of units are actually perfect for this, by the way. If you have any kind of recon unit as an infantry, they're very good at reconning, but they're very good also at sniping. I actually myself use uh, groups of Delta Force for this, and here we go, right off the bat, like, he just snipes out this transport helicopter. Of course, it's not fully dead, but it's pretty freaking dead. It's just so effective, like, they're very hard to find by having a high recon value. They're also very, very hard to see, very, very invisible. And so he's just gonna, you know, inch it forward slowly. We need to win all at once, of course. And uh, Red looks like he's winding up for another big attack, trying to regain this town, which of course is a, a very strategically important point. Because if you control the town, you also control this road, which means that, and that means you, you block off this road and this road, but not this long road. It just gives a good, good, good hitting point at the enemy. And oh my god, is that artillery fire pounding down on these poor tank destroyers? The BTR-65 is actually just sidestepping this area and it's really allowing itself to get hit. A lot of tank destroyers though, moving into... I, I don't get it. Maybe he's on the move fast command? Or something? Because he's going right through the enemy's main territory. Either that or he just doesn't want to quit. Hard to say, but it looks like he's actually going to try and get over here. I just don't know what he's going to be able to do with that. All the while, what's happened over here? The, the VPZU has in fact caught up a lot more units. It has forced an abandonment of this command temporarily. We have a helicopter also supporting, so this will probably get shut down. There are a lot of multiple Strelkies coming in, single infantry vehicle, and he's actually running out of ammo. That, so this, these special forces have really paid themselves off. They're doing quite well, especially if they get some grenades off and some of the enemies. And there they go. But they paid themselves off. It's a really good trade. I really like that. Ooh, a tank destroyer coming from around the back. What a sneaky devil he is. Going to the reinforcement point with a group of OT 800s. 8100s. Not a tank destroyer type that I've really seen a lot of in this game. And, um, yeah, the game kind of just slowed down. At this point, we have anti Torak really just resupplying all of his units with some supply. It's a little bit redundant. And we have a little bit of a helicopter strip here. Of course, these helicopters don't seem to be attacking, and they both fell over. So, I mean, not much going on. And oh, here comes a, UA, a UAZ 469 scout. It's armed with nothing, it is only used for targeting purposes. 
And we do have a nice little wave of infantry units coming across, maybe trying to take out this UAC. It's all the guys from over here. And another band of units might get caught. Ooh, the T-80s are winding up. This poor Scotch carrier is down. And there's a BTR 6090B PB right next to it. That can be problematic. The only cluster of units really left on the map for Aberdeen right now is the main one, which isn't too much. He's kind of just throwing everything he has away. Quite the problem. This game should be ending pretty quickly. Um, let's uh, kind of fast forward a hit to this battle here, because this will be one of the big desires. And oh, things are slowing down. Slowing down downtown. The Scott ran out of fuel in a very awkward position. Luckily, he's in cover, so it's not really spotable. And oh, what do we have here? Another multi prong type of attack. Different all on the and this is just good practice. Minimize the damage from artillery. We also have a small little person down here. This tank destroyer unfortunately getting wiped out by pure infantry. And there's a helicopter actually gonna come around. It's a transport helicopter, but it's got no precious cargo. But it does have some bullets and ooh, some other helicopters. Oh, these are anti-tank helicopters. Interesting. Potentially used to snipe out a command armor as more of these OT Scott vehicles are moving out and the final command lot is dead by artillery fire anti Torok wins in a very very convincing way and uh, moves on to round three so congratulations to anti Torak. this also may be antit o rack I'm not sure but I'm gonna call him anti Torak. So congratulations.